knew the prevailing thought would be this. Yes, the game will probably still be right for all of us. But could it also be a perfect fit just for you? And the answer to that question is an emphatic absolutely. In fact, we're so convinced of it that we put that pronoun right in the name. So today, welcome to the world of we, you. Ah, uh, the Wii U. Infamously known to be Nintendo's worst selling console, by 2017, at the end of its life cycle, many Nintendo fans were ready to leave it in the dust and begin to embrace the new Nintendo Switch console. We all thought that's what the Wii U meant to be. We thought it was going to be the future, and we were never going to look back at any other previous console. But now, about seven or eight years later, the Switch is now reaching the end of its life cycle, and everyone is now looking back and seeing how much a Switch, while being one of the best selling consoles in history, yes, was also kind of just pretty boring. It lacked a lot of personality that stuff like the Wii U or the 3DS had back in their era. And because of this lack of personality that usually comes with Nintendo consoles, people kind of just began looking back and realizing that the Wii U had all that. And now, you're just seeing all over the place that the Wii U is sort of like a hidden gen now, and it's been left in the shadows by the Nintendo Switch for like almost an entire decade at this point. People have been also been realizing how great of a library, how great its controller, how unique the community was with Miiverse and its home menu, all this is pretty much lacking from the Switch, and people were missing that. Despite all these great things that the Wii U had, it still flopped anyways. So why is this? Why did the Wii U flop so hard? This is why. This is the retrospective of the Wii U, Nintendo's most underrated console. The Wii U was first conceived in 2008. While the Wii was selling pretty well, it was known to have a completely different audience at the time. The Wii was thought to be too casual for hardcore gamer audiences, unlike the Xbox 360 and the PS3. This was mostly due to the weird controller, lack of HD graphics, and really bad online infrastructure. So they began a new console project nicknamed Project Cafe. It was set to be for both casual and hardcore gaming audiences, and the Wii U's final design was also inspired by improving some social aspects of the console. The gamepad was actually, in fact, originally intended to have a small screen for notifications and game information, which eventually just expanded to having more uses like being able to stream games and have a touch screen. The Wii U's controller was also designed to be easily worked with any other game console, such as a full set of face buttons, thumbsticks, bumpers, and triggers. All a familiar layout if you've ever used any PlayStation or Xbox. It was also purposely designed to be fully backwards compatible with the Wii, supporting essentially just the same infrastructure, but a lot more modern. With all this in mind, Project Cafe was shaping up to be a great successor to the Wii. And so, in E3 of 2011, Project Cafe was released, officially being called the Wii U. And eventually, it released to North America on November 18th, 2012. And that's essentially how the Wii U's design became to be. Now we can get into the actual design of the console. First, the gamepad. By far, if you've ever experienced the Wii U, the most interesting thing about it was the gamepad. Honestly, this is probably the most tech-backed controller that we've ever seen on the market. I'm going to name some of the stuff it has. A screen, and a touch screen at that, with game streaming, a camera, a microphone, NFC, infrared capabilities, which literally meant you could use this as a TV remote. Like. Come on, how cool is that?
It also worked with Wii remotes, which essentially meant that the gamepad could also be a sensor bar. Like, I never knew that was a thing, and that is just super, super cool. The thing also had a gyroscope, an accelerometer like the Wii remote had, had a headphone out, and speakers, and that's not enough. It also had a docking and peripheral port on the Bana, meaning this functionality could also be infinitely expanded. On top of just all the tech that's just been slammed into it, it's also, in my opinion, probably one of the most comfortable controllers on the market. I mean, we can see why Valve went with this design with the Steam Deck with the two thumbsticks at the top and you know, nice wide grip. It is super comfortable and I could probably game with it all day long. And I have with the Steam Deck too. However, Honestly, the Wii U Pro Controller, I got a couple of grabs with this thing. It's not really comfortable. I mean, it probably is comfortable for some people, but I don't really like Xbox controllers, and this is essentially how it feels. And, you know, they for some reason, they didn't put motion controls in it, which is like, in a system designed around this, you don't put in motion controls? Like, are you serious? There's like nothing pro com about this controller. The triggers also kind of just really suck. I guess they're more Xboxy too. I, ju I just don't, I, d I don't like it. It's not good. But I'll also kind of just show you it, but you know, Wii U I got from my friend, his family basically just obliterated the controller. So hey! <laughs> however, I do recommend if you do have home you can actually use an app and you can basically connect any controller on the market so personally I usually just use a Nintendo Switch Pro controller and it works nice however because it was never programmed to have motion control and it's emulating a Wii U Pro controller you're not going to be able to use the gyro which sucks for games like Breath of the Wild it's very very annoying but, you know, there's nothing you can really do about it. It's just how it works. And yeah, the gamepad, well, it was a little bit weird. It was definitely one of the best controllers on the market. But there's a lot more to this system besides the gamepad. The other half to it really is also to this, the UI. Let's see what makes this console's UI just so special compared to every other console's UI. This is Warra Plaza, Nintendo's answer to online connectivity for the Wii U. There's just a lot of mixed feelings with this. Some hate how much the gamepad has affected the menu, others hate the social part of the console, and it's just how it's just shoved right into your face. But personally myself, I love it because there's just so much charm to this interface. You could probably watch this menu for hours, at least I could. First you just see all these me's just pop up on the screen. You would see a whole bunch of different posts from different people with different games. 
and you could you know even click on them you could add them to your meme maker you could you know send a friend request you you could see what software they're playing in the wii u eShop. i mean there's just like there's so much personality and there's so much charm to this like whenever you booted up your console it felt yeah uh, you you saw that right that that was the most we're just saying i've ever seen my hand just went whoop. anyways it, it just felt like such a nice community feel like every time you booted up your wii u there was just like other people engaging in just like kind of like wheeled way like you felt like you're always online and engaging with people because of the Miiverse that was integrated into all their games. What really, really ties this all in together is just the background music. It's such a treat because you have the TV and you have the gamepad doing two different types of music that are the exact same, but you know, they have kind of just a different take to them. They sound great by themselves, when you just combine them together, it's just like a, a wonderful masterpiece, like, mm. Especially like the Wii Maker music, that is just golden. Definitely one of the best Wii Maker musics. Definitely tops the Wii like a hundred percent.
you even look at like the the home menu if you stop using the controller the music will actually slow down and then when you pick up the controller it will speed back up like that is just that is so cool it's just such a nice detail you also have another screen on usually the gamepad or the tv you can swap between the two and you can definitely see more of the 3ds kind of design in this you got all the grid icons like the 3ds does it kind of has like that uh square edge to all the icons like the 3ds does it also kind of reminds me of like the ps4 because a lot of like the menus like the settings and all that they're all kind of like in this grid this horizontal grid you also when you launch the console it opens kind of like this huge banner on the game like the ps4 does it's like if you mix the PS4 and a 3DS interface and you just smash them together. That's essentially what that bottom screen is. Now, despite all this, there is still a lot of flaws with this interface as well. Just the reliance on the gamepad itself really, really, really destroys the experience. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that work on the gamepad, but you just, for some reason, you can't do on the TV. Like, for example, the settings menu. You cannot do anything on the settings menu. Despite being, you should be able to do everything on the settings menu, except just specific settings relating to Wii U gamepad, which makes sense. But why would you lock that just behind the gamepad? There's like no reason to just have that wasted space on the TV. I mean, sure, there's helpful information about the settings there. But what difference if that was just on the Wii U gamepad and it was on the TV? I mean, you should be able to swap between the two. The only thing I could really see the reason why it's doing this is either one for entering sensitive information in the settings or like doing settings with the gamepad. But that's all not really required. Just ask them to switch to the gamepad like most, you know, games do when they require something from the gamepad. You also just have a negative effect with other apps like the Me Maker app because of that. I mean, if we look back at the the Wii. There's was a whole entire plaza that these Me characters would just explore around, and it felt lively. It felt, you know, like a community. But this one is just more like they're all just on a shelf, and you just kind of just interact with them. You hit edit. I guess you can put funny poses on them, which is funny, but it just doesn't have the same charm as the Mii Plaza did, and it, it kind of just makes it a little bit disappointing. Also, once again, you cannot edit Mii's on the screen. You can only do it on the gamepad. Like, why? This should not be like this. You should not need the gamepad just to do simple stuff like this. If you really require the gamepad, like, for like, I don't know, just the camera functionality in the app just ask them to switch like every other game that allows you to use the pro controller or the gamepad it's not hard i don't know why they just decided to implement it like this and this is what frustrates people about this interface like you always have to be tied to the gamepad and no one likes it another big complaint that often just comes from this menu is just how slow the menu is now i will admit it was abysmal at launch but now it's i don't really notice how slow it is sure it's not as fast as other consoles like the switch but like please go back and use a gen 1 3ds like the original 3ds or 3ds xl get back to me on how slow that is because it is basically the same speed as the wii u menu overall i mean if they did a better job at integrating the gamepad not to be so finicky this would almost been a like a flawless menu but because they didn't personally in my opinion it's more like a four out of five menu and i can find many reasons why people don't really like it Another thing that's just often really talked about the Wii U is it has kind of just one of the most interesting libraries of Nintendo's console lineup. 
I mean, first and foremost, there's just a lot of good first party games. You got Mario Kart 8, Captain Toad, Pikmin 3, Super Mario 3D World, the Zelda remakes, Splatoon, Breath of the Wild, Smash More. I mean, heck, a lot of the Switch libraries were just port of Wii U games. The only issue really with it is just throughout its lifetime, it lacked any must buy games. I mean, we had Breath of the Wild, but it took so long to make on the console that it was just shipped with the Switch. And, you know, at that point, why not just buy the Switch instead? The only really real reason why it was still on the Wii U is because it was originally promised to be on the Wii U, so they still made a Wii U port for it. And because of this, I do feel like this is one reason why the Wii U didn't really sell. I mean, the Switch every like year there was at least something that would make it worth buying the switch but you just didn't really have this with the wii u there wasn't really killer any killer apps we didn't have mario odyssey on the wii u but just a good thing to know is there was kind of a little bit more triple a support in more of a, like a weird way i mean you don't really see because just how underpowered the Switch console was. You didn't really see a lot of AAA games like Call of Duty games or Ubisoft games or any of that. It's what makes the Wii U's library with AAA games a lot more interesting than the Switch's. Because there's still a lot of stuff that was coming to the Xbox 360 and the PS3 that we had AAA support. More importantly though is that the Wii U is essentially the ultimate Nintendo gaming experience on your TV. I mean it supported playing every console besides the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, the 3DS, and of course the Switch. This is mostly just due in part because the Wii U had the same architecture as the Wii as I mentioned before. So it was fully backwards compatible with it and it even had a virtual Wii menu. Plus since it was basically a Wii with hacking you could play GameCube games on it like you could with all the other later gen Wii's that didn't have GameCube support. I mean in fact you can even put Wii and GameCube games on your Wii U home screen because there is an injection system for it that you can put any sort of backup file or anything like that and make it into a Wii U app that you can install. There's also just virtual console as well. I mean, you had the NES, the SNES, GBA, N64, and like the DS of all things, which, you know, makes sense because it had a touch screen. So it's basically the perfect way to experience, you know, DS games on a screen. And it, it, it just, all of it really mostly just works flawlessly with the gamepad. It's pretty great. However, I will say that there is a couple of like injection methods to get virtual console games like on your home screen, like the DS, but besides that, you're mostly probably just gonna have to use like RetroArch if you want to put other games on the console besides the one that are officially provided by a virtual console. But most of the titles that I really would really want to play on the console are there, so that doesn't really bother me. Also, just another interesting thing is we can play almost every major Zelda game except Tears of the Kingdom. I mean, you got you got the remakes, you got all the virtual consoles. Like the thing we don't, I think the only ones we don't have is we don't have the Oracle games in Link's Awakening, and then we also don't have Link Between Worlds on 3DS, and also of course Tears of the Kingdom because that was only on Switch. And it makes a really, really good console if you want to play Zelda games on your, you know, TV instead of trying to play it on 50 other different consoles. But besides that, in conclusion, if you're looking to play a lot of your Nintendo games on your TV, the Wii U is a really, really good option for you. It's also even just a really good option if you want to play them on your couch or on your bed because, well, yeah, the Switch could do the same thing. I mean... It doesn't have as vast as a Nintendo library as the Wii U did.
But of course, you know, with all this, everything I've been talking about, how it just has a tech pack controller, all the unique community features, unique home menu, and, you know, it's still a great library to back it today. Why did it still flop? Honestly, it kind of just mostly has to do with the marketing. I mean, let's just look at the reveal for the Wii U. Not only is it just off-putting, but it was literally just never specified what this thing was. For all we know, it could have just been a controller. I mean, heck, Reggie most of the time just pronounced it as just a gaming companion. So, was it just con a controller? I mean, most of the time we ever even saw the console, it was way in the background where people could literally easily mistake it for a Wii. So, a lot of people weren't really looking at it because it looked just like some sort of controller add-on for the Wii. It wasn't really, like, revealed until the E3 presentations. This was an actual full-on console that was shipping differently. But, like, most people are not going to shift sift through that they're going to just look at the marketing and take it from there and even in the marketing even in the actual marketing that they put they're not even going for what they were going you know what they intended for the console because the console like i said earlier was intended to be for all audiences for casual people and for hardcore gamers yet it was mostly just marketed as some sort of kids console and that's where a lot of this basically flopped. And not only that, but we only saw just the gamepad and Wiimotes and most of the promotional marketing, which made it just seem like, like, once again, it was just some sort of add-on for the Wii. And no one's going to buy that because most people are like, why would we need that? You know, we're having a perfectly good time with the Wii. Like, seriously, this thing could have taken off. It had a TV service backing it. All the major streaming services were backing it. You know, you had the controller where you could play separately from the TV. And you had, you know, even the controller itself was a good design. You had the community. You had, you, you had the perfect console literally in your hands. It could have just taken off. Yet, they wanted to screw up the marketing so bad that it's why it mostly flopped. And that's why we got 13.5 sales, million sales. This is why. It was not because the console was really that bad to begin with. Like I said, I think this console could have been one of the greatest consoles that ever released. I mean... Yeah, it has its flaws, but the Switch also has its flaws. It has a lot of flaws, yet it sold amazingly. The Wii had its flaws, yet it sold amazingly. It was just marketed so poorly that no one bought it because no one knew what it was. And I feel like that's why the Switch, honestly, with all of its lack of personality, is the way it is. Because they're so afraid of trying another Wii U that they went as far away of it as they could. So we just have a bland UI, we have, you know, basic everything. It just works. And they want to make an actual portable console. Unlike the Wii U where a lot of people got fed up because you couldn't bring it farther than, I don't know, the room over before it disconnected. Which... A lot of people just thought it was gimmicking, and they didn't buy it because of that. This is kind of why I feel like we're sort of going in the dark ages when it comes to Nintendo consoles. I mean, we got a lot of rumors going for the Switch 2 right now, and a lot of people are just worried. Like, they want another Wii U sort of S console where it has the personality. It has the charm. It has all of that. You know, Nintendo's probably not going to go with that because they want to go the safe way. And they want to make a console that is just basic and it works. And, you know, it also kind of makes me curious. What 
is going to be the Switch 2. The Switch almost kind of was like a game, like an end game. How can we make it greater than that the console is also a portable console? And it kind of just makes the Switch 2 kind of like in a gray RA situation. Or maybe we'll just have such another bland console again that maybe Nintendo will just get its head out of the water and get its head in the game. And actually make a console with the personality and charm that people expect Nintendo consoles to have. We're kind of just waiting for what's going to happen next. We're going to have a, you know, a good console that has personality and charm. Or are we just going to have an, another Nintendo Switch that they're going to try to sell us? But as for me, I do know that I've kind of mostly moved on from Nintendo consoles ever since the Switch. I mean, when I got a Switch, I was expecting a lot of the Nintendo charm that I had when I was a kid when I used to play on the 3DS all the time that I got for Christmas in 2011. And it was kind of just gone. And on a, really, most of the stuff that I wanted on the Switch never really came. It's also really why I got a Steam Deck too. It filled that gap that the Switch had. That gap was mostly just filled by the Wii U and like the Steam Deck. Both, I know I'm probably going to keep for a while. In conclusion... The Wii U was, yeah, it was a pretty good console. It's something that, you know, was just a thing of its time. Probably something we'll never ever see again from Nintendo. But for now, we're all just enjoy the revival of all the things like Miiverse and all the online features that were killed off by Nintendo with, you know, homebrew that's coming out. And we'll just dream of the day that, you know, the glory days of the stuff like what the Wii U did would return. Thanks for watching the video. If you know you made it this far, this video has taken you know a, a lot of effort, a lot of free searching, a lot of you know just in depth looking at different features, looking at different people's opinions. I feel like it's definitely going to be a nice product at the end, but at the same time, it's definitely a lot of work. So you know feedback sharing or you know commenting it it goes a long way at least for me you know it keeps the morale up with all these videos but with that i'll catch you all later